Welcome back scholars. In today's video, we're going to take a look at just three more examples using the sum and difference formulas. This time, our focus will be on solving trig equations. Let's get started. In this first example, we are solving an equation consisting of sine of a sum of two angles added to sine of a difference of two angles. The left-hand expression is equal to negative one. The first thing that we want to see here is that we can expand each of these two terms using sine's sum and difference formulas respectively. Now, that's a pretty lengthy left-hand side, but we'll go ahead and combine like terms, and that will simplify things really quickly. Okay, now I have 2 times sine of x times cosine of pi over 4 equals negative 1. I'll go ahead and reduce this 2 over 2 down to 1. Now I'll divide both sides by root 2, and I'll have sine of x equals negative root 2 over 2 after rationalizing the denominator. There are two angles where sine of x equals negative root 2 over 2 within the interval 0 to 2 pi. That will be x equals 5 pi over 4 and x equals 7 pi over 4. Notice that these solutions coincide with the x-intercepts when I graph this equation set equal to zero. All right, this next example is very similar to the one we just did together. Go ahead and try this one on your own. On the homework activity, look for the strawberry shortcake image to enter your solutions. The fully worked solution to this question can be found on the posted class notes. Let's do one more together. This time we have sine of theta plus cosine of theta equals one. Looking at this equation, there are no apparent substitutions that we can make using any of our known identities. So I'll square both sides of the equation with the intent to generate squared functions to make a substitution using the Pythagorean identities. When we square both sides, we need to take care to fully expand the left-hand side. Please make sure you don't distribute an exponent across addition here. Fully expanded, we have the trinomial sine squared theta plus two times sine theta times cosine theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. There's that Pythagorean identity, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta, which is equal to one. After making that substitution, the left-hand side is much simpler. I'll reduce this down algebraically to just sine theta times cosine theta equals zero. Using the zero product property, I've got a total of four possible solutions. From the sine theta, I have zero and pi. From the cosine theta, I have pi over two and three pi over two. Notice that I said possible solutions. Since we are algebraically changing this to a quadratic type equation, that is squared functions, there's a possibility that I generated extraneous solutions. We can check for extraneous solutions algebraically by substituting each of our solutions back into the original unchanged equation. We can also graph the original equation set equal to zero and look for x-intercepts on the interval zero to two pi. We can see from the graph and from the algebraic check that there's only two solutions to this equation, zero and pi over two. That wraps up our look at some indifference formulas. Next time, we'll take a look at some new identities. See you then.